All right, so here's the question for you. Did the mayor, I, I don't think the mayor cares what this looks like. We're going to, we are required to hold a public hearing. So we're going to hold one. It'll be 11 a.m. on Friday when nobody can show up. Um, uh, uh, did he sign the, the bill and make it law? Uh, have the extension, have the term limits been extended to 12 years in the city of Utica? Uh, Joe Marino, can I keep going or you want me to break? Uh, I'll just go with Joe now, and good morning, Joe. Good morning, Bill. How are you? Good. So what happened? Yeah, the mayor signed it. Wow. When did he yeah. sign it? Uh, I got a letter around 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, by email from my clerk's office. So we held the public hearing around 11 o'clock. I give a lot of people a lot of credit. It was not a conducive time to get out and, and have your voice heard, that's for sure. But yeah, the room I mean, was full. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, uh, the room was full. Yeah, it was full. I mean, you know, it was full with the amount of people that could be there. Like yeah, I said, yeah. I mean, 11 o'clock is not easy. I had to take time off of work. I know Mike Galimi took time off of work. Um, so a lot of people that, that came either took time off or were retirees, you know, some older yeah, people yeah. That, that made an effort to get down there. But, uh, yeah, so around 3 o'clock I got a letter saying that he signed it with a message. Wow. So, um Again, uh, talk about this. I, I don't think that this has been the optics of this just are so ugly um, because it just seems so much like this is something that the uh, that that the mayor really was pushing for. We found out the people carrying the signatures were really people close to the mayor. Uh, the mayor was lobbying for it, despite the fact that he came on the air and told us it was a big surprise. He was honored that people thought he was doing such a great job. that They would try to give him another chance to, to run for yet another term. And then as, uh, as it continued on with the vote, the way the vote happened, um, and now a public hearing held at 11 a.m. at a time when most people can't get out, uh, get off work, um, and then he signs it. The optics just don't look good, and he doesn't seem to care. Yeah, I don't think the optics have ever been the mayor's big concern throughout his administration. I mean, and this is just like a culmination. I mean, if you remember... Last year, we put out a paving plan, which, you know, I came in uh, on your show and we talked about it wasn't a perfect plan, but at least it done more. And it was just to bring the item to a referendum to hear from the people. And the mayor vetoed that. So, you know, he certainly didn't mind using yeah. his veto power. Uh, so he vetoed paving, but, you know, didn't mind signing his own uh, increase in power and an increase in terms. So, you know, just. The voice of the people is just kind of getting uh, pushed aside by this administration endlessly, and it's it's not fair. It's a, you know it's something that's very discouraging for me. I tell people that the city's a freight train and the conductor's riding the brake. Uh, right. Joe, I, if I can follow up on that, I believe you made this statement at the council meeting uh, where the council voted five four to extend the term limits. You had said that Mayor Palmieri has only put forth two pieces of legislation in his tenure as mayor. One was for a raise for certain city officials, and the other was to extend term limits. Is that accurate? Yeah, the, I mean, the mayor's actually really never put any legislation through at all. When I said that, it was just the two items that he actually pushed for, that he lobbied for in in back rooms, were his raise and this. Okay. I mean, you know, um, but... When you see executives like the governor, whether you like them or dislike them, whether Obama or uh, Trump puts out legislation or, or lobbies for things, it, this administration has never actually devised an initiative, ever. Uh, never been to council meetings. I've uh, been in the, uh, you know, the pre-meeting a few times. So the executive side of this, uh, of this administration has never actually pushed forward any legislation other than to lobby for one was his raise and Two was this actual uh, this extension of term limits, and yeah. you know, like I said, it's just disheartening that you know you got a lot of great people in the city pushing it all in the same direction, um, and then you got the corporation council's office and and the mayor's office just solely working on how they could protect this guy's job, and that's not what civil service has always been about, at least to me, and I know to a lot of other people in the area. So uh, it just gets discouraging, you know, and everything else that that's going on around us with private sector people. Uh, you know, you see Hotel Utica going the way it is. I always point to Blight Bakery and uh, and Frank Elias and Chris Talgo, you know, uh, smaller uh, private industry that, that's really expanding. Uh, the Comets are obviously a massive bit right. of industry that's really yeah. put us forward. And everything that we have with them 
has been pushback. I mean, you know, Rob Esch and Frank Duras and, and those guys are trying to uh, they're trying to put out millions of dollars, and, and there's never really been any cooperation from the city. So I, I just I'm kind of getting to the point where you say when is enough enough to you know go to the trough for yourself when you're going to start helping other people, and yeah, yeah. it doesn't seem to ever be the case. All right, so, I mean, you said if this were to, to pass and the mayor were to sign it, you would consider maybe a run for mayor? Are you? Are, can you say, based on this, you're angry enough to run for mayor? I would never be. Bill, listen, I, I, I know you do this, and I know it always sounds coy. I genuinely mean I, I have a, an election in November. Right. I love my, ne- my neighborhood. I, I didn't uh, run at large. I never ran for comptroller at the time. I love this neighborhood. I want to see this neighborhood grow. In you know maybe a few months when it, uh, dust settles and my election is over, then I would consider. Like I've always said, if, pe- if the people of the city will have me, I'll continue to stay around and do yep. what I could to help. Um, this issue doesn't mean one thing or another to me. What this issue means to me is that I'd like to be inaugurated again in January to try to reverse this and bring it back to the people. That's the only thing that I want to do okay. with this issue. Uh, and by the way, it was uh, 1993, right when the uh, when it was put up to a referendum. And I believe it was 67 or 65 percent of the vote, uh, people uh, voting to for term limits uh, to to extend the term limits. And uh, one would think that the people would get a chance to reverse that. Uh, but the only way they'd be able to do that is if they were to not vote for the mayor when he runs again for another term. It'll be uh, quite interesting to see what happens. Yeah. And that was my speech, you know, to the mayor when I went and spoke at public comment. I mean, you know, if you want to talk about this being about the people. And they keep on with this rhetoric that 1,200 people signed a petition. And, you know, so I, as an accountant, I'm a professional accountant. I talk to them about numbers. Yeah. The 1,200 people that signed this petition did so with the impression that they would have their, you know, the United States citizenry right to go out and vote. They only signed it because they thought that they were going to go in a poll and vote for it. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the five yes votes, the five yes votes were voted in with 5,800 people for no votes for this uh, refer- or this item were voted in with 1,200 people. If you look at how many people are just simply represented, 10,000 people represent each council district, and uh, stat large is 62,000. It's 104,000 for the yes votes, 112,000 for the no votes. Every, No matter how you slice it or dice it, yeah, to use yeah. the mayor's term, there is no adding up of how this is representative of the people. It's just not. So, um, yeah, when January comes along, if we could reverse this and bring it back to referendum, I would, you know, I'm going to do everything I could to do that. And if not, then if the mayor's sitting at a podium in two years, you know, running for mayor, I'm going to remind people why he's there. Um, so to be clear, uh, you said that you would maybe after once the dust settles on the election um, coming up in November, you would consider the possibility of running for mayor, something you might think about uh, in January or February. Yeah, so when my family and I get to sit down and November okay. uh, falls through and everything goes well, hopefully. After this election, my wife and I and my family will sit down and we'll discuss how we can go forward with the city. Like I said, if I can help, I'll do that to help. I, I certainly won't do it for any monetary gain. I'm, you know, it's, I, I don't, you don't make a lot of friends in Utica politics, that's for yeah. sure. So um, that's not the issue. It's just I love this place. I want my kids to stay around and have a nice job and not take off when they're 18. So right. that's always been the issue, and that'll be the issue continuing. So if everything goes well, yeah, we'll, we'll absolutely consider all our options. Okay, Joe, we appreciate your time, and uh, it's official. Twelve, uh, the uh, term limits are now at 12 years in the city of Utica. So, yeah, guys, thank right. you so much. Thanks so much for the time. Appreciate it. Joe Marino, Councilman, oh. City of Utica.